Hi guys, we're here today with our one pound Apollo. I'm going to open this up real quick. You can see that there is a user manual included. This manual has tons of information on how to run the extractor properly, complete with uh, parts lists and flow diagrams, stuff like that, everything you need to know. We have a silicone slick pad. We have an extra gasket set. Some propane or butane stickers. You throw these on your reactor, just know that they are propane and butane machines. We have a can piercer. This is used for small cans of butane. Put them right in here. This little needle will pierce the can. And you can safely hook up a hose to here and then use a valve of some sort. And we have an HVAC hose. It's gonna go with our vacuum pump over here. We're gonna use this to pull a vacuum on the entire extractor after it's packed up with material. I'll leave that to the side. Obviously right here is our extractor. It's a one pound Apollo. And it comes with this LP tank here. Our tank is already loaded with about 10 pounds of butane. And we're gonna use six into this extractor. So I'm gonna start packing my column. Just take off the top clamp first. This clamp here is a single pin. We should have no problem with this. You'll see inside we have a screen at the bottom. Kind of hard to see without a light, but that will keep our material from going straight through to the base. So to start putting my material in, I'm gonna use this here funnel. It'll be a lot easier because I don't have to spill anything. I have hops that were previously vacuum sealed in a different episode. I'm going to take these and start putting them in the funnel. Pull out any sticks or any garbage I don't want in there. So this extractor will work with any botanical material. I'm using hops here for demonstration. So every so often, I'm going to take off my funnel. I'm going to use this column packer. Have a hole right here for air relief. Make sure that's lined up before you start. I'm going to use this. Push the material down as far as I can. I want to pack as much as I can in this column. This will help to make the butane take longer to get through and it will saturate the material better. If you would like, you can use a hammer to smack down the top of the rod. I'd recommend, recommend a dead blow mallet, just so you don't cause damage to anything. Put the funnel back, and more materials will go in. back on. We're using a three inch single pin clamp. This clamp is rated to over 150 psi. We should have no problems here. To turn it tighter, you can use a screwdriver or any random Allen wrench will do. Tighten it up. Now to start my run, I need to tear out my butane. Make sure I'm going to have a clean scale with nothing else on it. I'm just going to sweep everything off. So included in this kit is a VE160 vacuum pump. We have our vacuum pump on this side of this orange hose. We ran it through the wall because these pumps are not explosion proof. We cannot have them in the explosion booth. You can see our pump over there. These should only be used on an empty system with no butane inside of it, as butane going through the pump could cause 
minor fires or explosions even. So we're going to open up the vacuum valve. I'm going to turn on the pump. And you see this gauge go down. It's going to evacuate the entire system of air. We do this after we pack our columns because if it was not packed yet, we'd have to open it again. That wouldn't be possible. So after we pull a complete vacuum, we'll start running the system. Close to negative 30 inches of mercury. I'm going to turn off our pump. After closing the vacuum valve, of course. Okay. Now this line doesn't matter anymore. You can leave it on if you like, or you can take it off. It's irrelevant to us at this point. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to tear my scale. So this is a intrinsically safe battery powered scale. I'm going to use it to weigh out my butane as it goes through the system. This system can hold about six pounds of butane. It, we put about 1.1 pounds of material in the column, so that should be plenty to extract. This system here is known as a top fill, means you can only put liquid butane through the top of it. There's no manifold to go bottom up, it can only go top down. I'm going to open up my liquid port here. There's now going to be liquid butane rushing through this line. When I open this valve, it's going to shoot it through the column. You can immediately see our gauge is going to start going up in pressure as butane is added to the system. You can even see our column starts to get pretty cold with the butane rushing through. So as you can see, we still have our scale moving down. It's at negative 4.1 right now and dropping which means we have 4.2 pounds of butane in our system. If, if your scale does not move down at this rate or it even stops before it gets this low, it means you have some kind of vapor lock in your system, which can be due to either temperatures or pressures. Uh, this can be solved usually just by adding some warmth to your tank. So I'm gonna give it a little demo right here. What I would do is get a bucket of warm water. I would put the butane right inside of it and make it warm. This would help us to boil off more butane and increase the pressure in the LP tank. So we're just about at negative six pounds, which means six pounds to evacuate our LP tank into our extractor. There we go. I'm going to turn off the liquid valve now. And the top valve of our extractor. So there you go. That's how you run an extractor. All the oil has been pushed through. We're going to get a little look inside the sight glass here. You can see that oil resin is a mixture of our oil with butane still in it. The next step of the process is to recover all our butane back into our LP tank. And this is going to be done by using, we're going to use a passive system which means there's no recovery pump, it's just going to be difference of temperature. In our recovery phase, I'm going to dunk this whole extractor into my hot water, shown by the red bucket. The hot water is going to heat up the butane and build pressure, and that's going to make it easy to recover through this line here. This right here in our LP tank, we're going to put ice and water. I'd recommend using dry ice and ethanol. That'll be the quickest way to recover because you'll have the lowest pressure in your LP tank. So I'm going to dump some ice in. And this is just some cold water. But you could use ethanol here and dry ice, which is recommended. Now that I have all my materials put into the bucket on the scale, I have to tear the scale once again. And this time we're going to see the scale go positive. That will be the amount of butane recovered from the base of the system into the LP tank. So first I'm going to open up the valve from my base. 
and then open up the gas inlet on our LP tank. Passive recovery is the bottleneck of the process. We also have units that use active recovery. We can use units that use chillers and heaters for better uh, heat and cooling. There's all kinds of things you can do. For recovering, I'm gonna point out a few things that we can do for upgrades on the system. One great upgrade would be a ball valve right under the material column. A ball valve here would allow you to soak the column in butane before you dump it into the base. This will maximize your yield. Another uh, common upgrade would be high pressure clamps. If you'd like to use higher pressures or use a propane blend, you should use high pressure clamps and that'll allow you to do so. We can use metaglass sites as well. That'll also allow for higher pressure. These are polycarbonate currently. We're only about 30 PSI. So it's not a big, uh, it's not a large PSI. We also have recovery pumps such as a CMEP. This will take right in the middle of this line here. It will pull from the base and push into the collection. This will speed up your recovery as well. So I'm just gonna let this recover for a while. It may take up to an hour or so. Uh, I'm not really sure, but um, it all depends on your heating and cooling. Thanks for watching today. Stay tuned, we'll show you our end product soon.